Welcome back to Nuts Birkin Time Podcast featuring Pokemon Showdown. Hello everybody, I hope you enjoy Berserk after Golden Age arc. So, uh, what did I send in as Elite? Uh, Heatran probably. But, um, nah. so Nuts Birkin Time. So it was chapter 92... Up to chapter 165? I think that's good. Uh, yeah. Or like, we could also say volume 13 to 20. It was 14. Same thing. No. Oh my god, you fucking lucky bastard. I have flamethrower, you're going to die. I don't think so. I do, you'll see it in the footage. I have flamethrower. Um. Anyway, uh... Uh, not spurkin time, you know. The, the, the not not spurkin time, yeah. You know, when when they not spurkin time. Yeah, so uh, yeah. last time, we the we still have some chapters from uh, before, a uh, golden age arc ends, which are like. It was like the epilogue of the golden age. Yeah. So. Yeah, basically, the uh, nuts, you know, all the bad things happened, and then nuts were saved by going to like the one lodge mm -hmm. area where like the girl and the old man were. And Casca is there as well, and she's very down horrifically bad right now. She's uh, not feeling good. She's unhealthy, yep. you could even say. One might say she's not doing too hot. Yeah, she's doing really bad, in fact. Um, so so uh, I guess that's that was like the setup be, for what's going to be, like, it seems... Oh my god, you fucking cunt. She's like taking a shower there. Um, well, she was under a waterfall, right? Yeah. Uh, and then Guts is God, like, oh my god. Guts is like, oh, you're so hot, babe. That's so sexy. Easy. Focus hits. Easy. And then, oh, um, this thing is magic guard. Fuck you. Yeah, that's what this thing runs. You act like you've never seen a Reuniclus before. Easy Focus hit. Hit. It's actually 50% chance to hit twice. And the Spadef. Oh ended. my god. Oh my god. Um, But anyway, Berserk... When, hacker, hacker. It's when hacking. Guts is Berserk. We do see a lot of Guts being Berserk in, in this. This guy's actually hacking. Now that we've gotten past the end of the Golden Age. Oh yeah, he's like really not feeling good. Well, he's just Berserk. He has a lot of the Guts Berserk moments. That's true. I, I lost luck. I lost luck for this one. Luck? That's skill, Mando. Anyway, uh, I don't know where this actually great uh, background noise because I actually talk on Pokemon. Hey, I can I can focus perfectly fine on Berserk and still thrash you. So right. I think so it scares happened? you for you. Or it's like I got on team twice. Uh, so yeah, what what happened uh, after? Well, like uh, Casca's like mind fucked now. She's, yeah. she's like a baby. She's like a toddler in the brain, and got just like, oh Casca, I love you, and then she's like, ah, I'm a baby. I bite you. Yeah, and well. Trying to, like, fix Casca, I guess, rescue her in whatever way, seems to be, like, the main driving force for what, what Guts is oh, up yeah. to Kask right now Kask during this well, whole yeah. arc. I mean, no, like, that's, the, that's the whole point for, like, a bit, where, like, that's what he's supposed to focus on, but he doesn't actually focus on that at the start. He, like, he is first into, like, revenge, and he has to learn that revenge is not the goal. It is protecting Casca, the only thing he has left. Uh, in general, the big theme... I mean, he, he like said it a few times. Uh, we'll we'll get to a moment later where he says it again. Uh, but every time he notices that he has a good thing, he like doesn't notice. But he, he only notices he has something good like after it's already gone. Like uh, That's true, in general, yeah, yeah. Yeah. a big repeat, like a big repeat thing in Berserk is that Guts keeps making mistakes. Yeah, and, he's uh, kind of a dumbass. Mistakes, yeah, and like the big mistake here is it, in general is not like appreciating and loving the things he has. And always wanting different things, and then mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't turn out so well. Uh, but yeah, basically, uh, he's not very happy about what happened to Casca, especially because Casca doesn't like him now that she's in her baby state. Uh, after Gus finds out how Casca is like down horrific, uh, he runs away uh, to like a field, and then now then we are introduced like to the whole thing where going forward, Gus is basically permanently going to be haunted by like the dead spirits of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say he's got like one foot in 
the real yeah, world and then one outside. Whatever yeah. that actually means. And it basically ends up meaning that uh, guy's not feeling so good. That's true. Well, uh, how to say this best? Uh, but yeah, he now is always fight like uh, it's like a thing that comes up a lot during these volumes is that every night he's attacked by like the ghosties and he has to fight them all night and he doesn't get to get, have good sleepy time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for a while it feels like there's like just like a monster of the volume kind of thing where he fights the the moth person, he fights the. Um... I know that's that's not true, really. It, it like, kind the moth, of was. The, the, moth own, the moth has its own arc. Yeah, but it it wasn't long or anything. Like he doesn't have to be long. And that's what I'm saying. That's kind of what it feels like. What did you think about the moth arc overall? Okay, so moth arc is like um, well, uh, like Guts runs away. Oh yeah, the thing is, uh, we didn't uh, say that yet. Uh, Kafka also has the same thing going on, so she's also always right, uh, yeah. in danger. So, yeah, and then uh, she's, like, locked in a cage while Guts goes on and does his, like, mission Casca protection. Yeah, he, like, he left her with that kid who they also rescued, or that the Skeleton Knight also rescued, right? What was I that guess, guy's name? I mean, uh, like, Rick, Rick, her, Rick, Rick her, yeah. Thing. Rick from Rick and Morty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're together. Uh, but yeah, Casca's the cage, and uh, oh yeah, wait. Before that, uh, the Casca's and Gutch's child has been like corrupted by Griffith. Oh yeah, uh, mm -hmm. doing the doing the doing the evil evil thing to her. Sex. They she they sex. Yo, JJK is out. JJK is out. We we we're doing the podcast. We can pause. We can pause yeah. Gutch Burke in time. Three JJK. Are you, are you gonna like like edit this then? Nah, I don't feel it. We can finish Guts Broken Time first, and then we can do that. Yeah, let's finish Guts Broken Time first. I'll take it out, I'll be honest. I, I feel like it is taking away from the... Uh, like, it's it's not it's no good, it's no good. We, we, we probably should... Uh, damn easy. But yeah, we probably should uh, only focus on Guts Broken Time and like have something like random in the background while talking. Speak for yourself. I am speaking for myself. I'm saying that I have a hard time focusing. So yeah, yeah for, for okay. the good of the podcast, I'll... You can, you can just play for yourself. Here, then. I'll change accounts to the Mugcourt account. If you want to log into right. the Mugcourt account, we can just fucking play random battles on the ladder. Alright, alright. Um, let me be like the guy, the spiritual guide for what's going to happen in the podcast, then. You'll be the co-host, then. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, their baby has been corrupted by Griftev doing the, the evil thing to her. Rex! And uh, she really likes her baby. Um, the Guts really hates their baby, so Guts mm -hmm. like tries to like take the baby and smack it on the ground and kill it, and uh, yeah, uh, the baby like then disappears. It's like kind of the spirit realm, similar to like, the other spirits. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the baby disappears, Casca basically goes, "This Nuts guy, I hate him like even more now. Like actually, like despise him." Uh, then I think like a bit, little bit of time passes, and. Uh, He's re got very sad because after that incident, like Casca just straight up hates him. Doesn't want to like ever be around him. Doesn't eat food when he like he gives mm -hmm. it to her. Mm -hmm. And because of all this, he just decides, now nah, fuck this. I gotta go and like take my revenge or something. And uh, he leaves Casca in like that caged basement uh, at the uh, place and uh, goes away to like, I guess find. Save the world, or whatever. I don't even know. I think he's just. Uh, I mean, he's like on his revenge quest, right? Yeah. You're going to go and like, take revenge. Um, and Puck is with him the entire time, sadly. Yeah, I wanted to talk about Puck. Like, what do you think of Puck overall? I just... I mean, it is like a thing that, in general, I wanted to bring up today. I didn't expect Berserk to be, like, this comedy. Like, I thought it was just going to be serious. It's, like, a lot of comedy because of Puck. And, mm -hmm. you, like, the, like, a character we're going to get at the start after the, the, the children arc. The stupid child. Yeah, and our yeah. Comic character there's just so much unserious moments with these two yeah i feel like it detracts from the overall berserking time experience like i like it feels just out of place I, it feels like it doesn't need to be there or should be there 
I couldn't care less about those moments. I mean, if they think in general, like when Puck, I mean, like when, when Guts like does like funny things with Puck. I think when he himself does them, it's like sign kind of endearing sometimes. Like the the big Guts guy to like um, you know be a little less serious. It, it brings back like the previous Berserk moments from like before the times where Guts was also himself sometimes goofing around with his friends. Right. But but the, it's just too much generally. I think like the Puck is like. Like, Puck's, like, very much comic relief. Uh, at, th at this point in the manga, Puck's are also, like, drawn, like, 95% of the time in, like, a cheapy art style. Yeah. I just, uh... I don't know if it's weird. Um, I think it would be better to, like, keep those moments just to, like... Like, just sometimes Puck does, like, sillying around with Guts to remind everyone that Guts is still a human. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not just going nuts berserk always. Because those moments I don't mind generally when like they like do a little goofing together. Right. I'm not a fan of it, yep. but it is what it is, I guess. But yeah. Uh, now let's go to like the arcs. So Guts goes away, and we get to the Moth Arc. Mm -hmm. The Moth Arc is basically uh, there's like a village, and the village is attacked by fairies, and Guts is like fairies. That sounds weird. And Puck is like fairies now. Nah, fairies don't attack humans. And then they see creatures that look almost like fairies, but they're just trans they're tra they transform into like insects. And like guts goes killing like all the insects that attack the village. And uh, turns out they're kids. It turns out all of them are kids. And then everyone thinks that guts is like a super evil murderer because uh, the shed he like burned is filled with child corpses afterwards. Kind of based though. Fuck. Yeah, that's pretty based. I like uh, that, that. I mean, I, I said I kind of like where Berserk is going now that there's a shed with like. Hundreds of dead burned children. True. Yeah, I like um, that. Yeah, so, um... There's this, like, valley where, like, the elves live, and Guts, like, I have to go there and kill the elves. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then there's, and, like, in this arc, there's, like, this girl who's, like, a, the friend of the the big fairy. Because the big fairy used to be a girl, like, her, like her childhood friend, and then she transformed into a demon, like, all the other people who transform into demons. Killed. And there's, like, a plot about, like, them being friends. It's like not that interesting. There's also like a Peter Pan kind of. There's like some some story about like a child that was like an outcast and they thought it was like fairies. Like it's like some like childhood story. In general, I think this part is also like inspired by like Peter Pan story stuff. You know, like the whole like uh, a place where children go where mm -hmm. adults aren't because adults suck. Like, yeah, it, it, it felt very much felt inspired. And we saw a small person before teased in like. Um, before everything went to shit and not berserk, uh, yeah. Golden Age art. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of like an awkward read because she is very much child, and there's like a naked child on the screen the entire time. She's not wearing clothes. Yeah, you always hear I, it's, titties, it's bad. Jump butt. Yeah, I don't like it at all. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good. It's not good. But yeah, um, Guts goes to the valley. Uh, before he can go into the valley, like uh, like all the adults that the fairies killed transformed into insect as well. So he like fights a bunch of like giant insects, basically. Yeah, and he destroys them, but he gets injured. Uh, but that doesn't. And then the, they go to the the fairy valley, and uh, they find out that all the children are turned into insects by putting them into like cocoons. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they notice that like uh, the cocoons are like flesh cocoons, and like they they're, like their bodies are melted inside. And they're like, yeah, like it's like it's, uh, like there's some grotesque scenes of like them being cut open and then like like a broth of like a dissolved person comes out, mm -hmm. and, like drops onto like the, the little girl. Uh, overall, this part doesn't matter. Like that part is mostly just eventually guts like burns down the cocoons and then he fights the main moth girl, who transforms from a normal like moth human appearance into like a big monster. Into an actual monster, yeah. Yeah, and then she like in, she pierces like guts. And, like, flies away with him and, like, crashes against him sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, overall, like, the whole thing about this arc is that Guts has, like, multiple opportunities to kill her, but doesn't. Because she's with the other girl and he doesn't want to kill the other girl. Because he's, like, haunted. But, like, oh, yeah, yeah, but when he killed all those children, he was also haunted by that. It, like, it reminds him of, like, how he, like, almost killed his, like, child. And I guess he just doesn't like the idea of killing children in general. Boo, unbased. Yeah, it is very unbased. But yeah, um, there's like a theme in this arc where like Guts doesn't want to kill children really, and uh, he feels really bad about it. And uh, 
uh, a lot of times where he could have killed, he doesn't because of this. But mm -hmm. in the end, he manages to uh, kill the big moth. Yep. And um, Bucktout's got this entire arc also that he's like, kind of an asshole. Because he uh, treats the child badly. Right. Uh, yeah, and then there's like a side plot, which like is going to be relevant in the next arc as well. I got us being like trailed by a bunch of like holy knights who are all mm -hmm. they're, they all kind of suck at their job. They're really they're like uh, like they're just a bunch of nobles like go around pretending to play knight. That was like kind of like the, the theme. Yeah, they yeah. Uh, follow guts, and then after guts killed all the moths and all the insects, they show up and they're like, "Damn, this guy killed like like a bunch of humans. He's evil. We're gonna we're gonna like uh, imprison him." They were also sent on a mission to imprison him to begin with, but the. Uh, so like they were gonna do that anyway, but because they every time they see a place where guts killed a bunch of monsters, they see human corpses because the monsters are humans transformed into monsters. They think that guts is like an evil monster himself. Right. Mm -hmm. And he fights them, and he destroys as usual. Guts half dead, still like kills twenty five hundred humans by himself because he's just crazy. Because he's guts berserk. Yeah. Uh, but eventually he gets captured by them because he's very injured. Uh, I think this is where the arc basically ends, right? Guts is captured so. by them and brought in. Their pre We're basically yeah. starting the next arc. This arc ends with uh, all the moths are dead. Uh, the village that they were attacked by, I guess, are, is like, better off now. Mm -hmm. um, but there was, there was also today? something. There was also something about like the the child that like. That she wanted to like go away. She thought that like being in the village sucks. And then Guts basically mm -hmm. told her, um, "No, actually, being in the village is nice because outside of the village are evil monsters that kill people. So uh, stop being a bitch, baby, and go back to your village and uh, with your abusive dad." Yep. <laughs> so yeah, she went back. She went back to the village with her abusive dad. I think. I think so. Yeah, I think that's how that ended. Yeah, and Guts captured was got captured, and then we're going to the next arc. The next arc is like the. Um, the holy people arc, uh, which we haven't finished yet, so we're gonna like stop right before the end, probably of this arc. I presume. I think so. I think so. It seems like it's almost done. It feel it felt, uh, but we don't know yet. Um, right. It felt like it, it. It felt. It feels like we're currently at like a finale, but we don't know. What do you think about um, the um, that one guy? I don't remember his name. Um, actually, let me let me just look. Um, you can't describe him to me. Sir Pico. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, he's like definitely supposed to be like important. Uh, yeah, and I also saw on the like analyst page that he's a main character. Yeah, so that's why he stuck out to me. Why I wanted to ask you about him because this was like the introduction also, to simulated main also, character. And he's supposed to like, I mean, he's definitely supposed to stuck out anyway because like you see on multiple occasions that he's like good at his job. Mm -hmm. Like, um, uh, it's gonna come up later, uh, like twice in this arc. But yeah, he's like, like where most characters are obviously like. So much weaker than Guts. This guy is pretty good. Yeah. Like he's yeah. not he's not Guts, but he's a he's a strong fighter. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna probably also learn more about him eventually. So far, what we have learned about him is that uh, his mother was burned at the stake uh, for being a witch, and he's uh, not happy about that. Probably. Probably. Uh, but that's coming up later anyway. So um, for now, Guts is captured by them. Uh, the leader of the knights is like a woman, and uh, he like. He tries to whip Guts and get yeah. the information out of him. Uh, when she and, realizes uh, she's into it and she whips herself and turns herself on. Because she's I mean, a woman like, comes later. I guess mean, comes later. First she like whips Guts, uh, tries to get the information out of him. And Guts basically just uh, keeps telling her, you suck, you're a bozo, you're ugly, you're a woman. Yeah. Uh, and eventually the Guts gets like taken away. Like, uh, he's, like she, um, he's put back into his cage. Yep. Uh, and late, and then afterwards we see her that she's like whipping herself. Uh, she's doing flagellation, you know, like the the thing that people do, like self whipping. And that's like the official term for it. You is take. It? Uh, it is. Are you sure? It is. Uh, Darkest Dungeons has a, a class based on this. Are you uh, sure it's know. called flagellation? Not flagellation. Flagellation. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, she's doing that. Um, and uh, it's sort of implied that she's into it. She implied? No, she's just into it. That, uh, this part is kind of more like implied. It comes up like more later. Yeah, but you can tell. 
yeah, I think at this point it wasn't really that obvious. She was more like just, oh god, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. And then she uh, masturbates then... in the next chapter. It comes up later. It comes up way later, Tekken, actually. It's not way later. It is literally like... It wasn't today's volume section or last volume section. No, it was, it was... like two days ago. It was like yesterday. No. It's because you it wrote two volumes yesterday. yesterday. That's possible. But yeah, anyway, uh, for now... I mean, this is like the second volume I'm pretty... For, I mean, yeah, no, like, the, the, the exact dates are, like, not important. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, Guts escapes his cage because the demons are, like, coming after him. Yep. Uh, and, he, and he captures her, and he, like, threatens everyone else, like, all the people in his camp, like, hey, let me go, let, let me go, or else uh, I'm going to kill your commander. And they're like, well, I guess we have to let him go. And they ride away, and uh, while they ride away, like, the spirits keep attacking them. Yeah, eventually, the spirits, like, go into a pack of wild dogs and attack them. Uh, and then the horse they rid on eventually also gets like possessed by a spirit, and uh, she's naked the entire time because she was naked from like whipping herself. Because she's a woman in in. That's, uh, that's true because of that. And uh, the horse tries to assault, sexually assault her. There's like a this scene. Yeah, I was surprised that you guys didn't know about the horse scene. It's like a often discussed in a berserk community. Yeah, well, as far as I've I'm heard. Not in the berserk community. But I've heard a lot about the horse scene, so I already knew. Um, but yeah, that happens. Uh, Guts, like, beheads the horse before anything can happen, though. Unfortunate. Uh, you, heard, you said that, not me. So anyway, um, <laughs> Guts kills all the spirits, and she, she's like, and the, the, like, one spirit comes close to her, uh, and, like, that, that spirit basically tells her, uh, you're not into this for God stuff, you are, like, a dominatrix, you, you really are, like, a kinky, you, you like whipping people, you like being whipped yourself. And she's like, no, no. And then the sword is like, yeah, yeah. And then eventually, like, the sword kind of takes over. Uh, and Guts is, like, laying on the floor after having, like, fought the entire night fighting off demons. Right. And she just, like, goes on top of him and, like, <laughs> she, she, like, uh, puts her vagina very close to I'm Guts' sword. sword. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. When we say sword, we don't mean his penis, by the way. We mean, like, actual <laughs> Guts' sword. And she's like, you just press it and like press it cut my vagina in half then cut me in half so because she's like yeah then Gata's like bro what are you doing let me alone <laughs> leave me alone I just want to sleep uh and uh I think I don't remember where Guts like punches some sense into her or where Puck punches some sense into her but yeah um the, the, the demon that like is possessing her leaves her and then she's like oh no what am I doing <laughs> oh no I'm sitting up on Guts oh, oh, were we having sex <laughs> Yeah, and then the Sir Pikyo guy show, uh, shows up and like is like, all right, all right, all right. I'll take the commander. Uh, I'll give her some clothes and uh, I'll bring her back to camp. And uh, you can go, Guts. And Guts is like, okay, I'm happy to go. And then like the second Guts turns around, he like attacks him. Mm -hmm. And Guts, obviously Guts dodges. And then uh, I mean, you know, they, they both draw their swords and like uh, it's basically a standoff where like. They, they noticed that uh, both of them are pretty good, but uh, he, he also noticed that uh, even though Guts is injured, he can't, like, fight Guts right now. Yeah. So they just uh, they just say, um, yeah, we, we both, like, know that we are strong now, and uh, we can leave. And he, and he, like, sighs some relief later. He's like, oh, this Guts guy is strong. You know, he's so injured, he was still able to, like, defend against, like, this backstab attack. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Guts goes away. Uh, at this point, he's, like, really injured, I think. Yeah, like, he's he, fucked up. Pretty sure. Like just like he just collapses basically, uh, like in a cave, and it's like this sucks. He's like, uh, but then he gets like a vision of his like child, and the child basically gives uh tells him, "Hey, guts, uh, Casca's in danger. Mom is in danger because you know it's there. It's his child, oh. Casca's child." What do you mean? Oh. <laughs> but yeah, uh, he gets a vision, and Gats is like. Wait, Casca's in danger. Thank you for telling me the child I tried to kill and I hate you. Uh, mm -hmm. And then he's like, I have to go. I have to go there. And he gets up and he goes. And Puck is like, Guts, what are you doing? And he's like, I have to go somewhere. Uh, and for now, he goes back to, um, like, uh, where, he, where like, he doesn't know where Casca is, so he goes back to where you know, Casca is. Like, mm -hmm. with the, the old yeah. man. And like, like, uh, it, like, at this point, like, two years are supposed to have passed. Like, uh, the child arc and this arc and like just Guts going around in general I guess and him also like walking back that is supposed to have taken two years I think 
Bagash was running around for like two years doing mm -hmm. all the shit. Mm -hmm. And he comes back and he sees the like little girl child and he's like, Hey, how's it going? I'm happy that you're still alive. And uh, the little girl child's like, I like Puck. I really like Puck. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he comes to Rickard and he's like, hey, Where's Casca? And then he's like, Casca, she's John. She's John. <laughs> <laughs> she, she left. And, Ga and uh, uh, God's just like, Rickard, you piece of shit. I hate you so much. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> And uh, the little big girl is like, no, it was my fault. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Casca was always so, so depressed to the point where she didn't want to eat food anymore. So I let her like go outside for one, like once with her, and then I lost her, and then she went away. And then I couldn't find her. And please don't blame Rickard. He like every day he tries to, like he tried so much. Like he he kept looking for her like every day in and out, but he couldn't go. He couldn't have gone for a long time because he had to always come back. Mm -hmm. And that's like, why do you always have to come back? And he's like. Uh, he, like, he points upwards and he's like the old man. He goes uh, like one story higher in like the shed. I see that the old man is like bad bound. He's very old now. Uh, yeah. The old man's like being a sarcastic guy. He's like, ah, I was I was so happy dying like like solemnly and nicely. And then this loud guy comes back. Obviously, he had to come back when I'm dying. Poor guy. And they have and uh, they have like a conversation where the old man basically gives like guts like some wisening. He's like, hey guts, uh, you know. Don't blame Rickard. Why did you go away for two years mm -hmm. on your like stupid quest for revenge when Casca, when you cared so much about Casca, why weren't you here when uh, you cared so much about her? Then that's what like he clicks and it's like, holy shit, I made a mistake again. Oh my god, why, why do I not Berserk always make the same <laughs> mistake over and over again? <laughs> but yeah, this is not um, Berserk. you basically, you could even say that uh, this is his conviction that from now. Oh my on, god, the conviction on, arc. Yeah, because it's a conviction Holy arc. He would say that shit. he basically he, he his conviction from going forward is that he's not going to repeat this mistake, and this time he is going to save Casca. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, the old man, even though he's like almost dead, gets out of bed and he's like, "Shut up! Uh, I need to like help your your ass out." And he like uh, reforges got his sword and armor and everything else because it's broken from like having fought for two years against mm -hmm. monsters so much. Um, I think it's implied that the uh, Guts' new armor is really good, and uh, the Dragon Slayer sword is even better now after the yeah. old man reforged it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Thank you, old man." And the old man is like, uh, "Fuck you, never come back." Yep. <laughs> Obviously, in a loving way. But then it's also like implied that like, um, even though he thinks that Guts is wrong, he also agrees with Guts, and it's like, Guts never become like me, a man who um, what was like. He could have had dreams and he followed them somewhat, but then he like like he's like bound now. It, it was like a little hard to understand for me, but yeah, it, it kind of implied that the old man is not actually happy, like fully happy before he ended up being. And even though he told guts like uh, some wise information, mm -hmm. he did say, "Don't specifically become like me. Don't make me your role model." Right. But yeah, uh, so now guts, uh, I guess probably healed up from his wounds and also re-equipped. Uh, goes to the tower, which he had in his visions, because uh, in his vision, it like, was like said, like I don't remember what the exact keywords were, but he like repeated them to one of the, to the I think Rickard. And mm -hmm. Rickard told him, "Oh, I don't know where that could be, but like it kind of sounds like this place." And got us like, "Okay, thank you. I'm gonna go to that place." Yeah. Uh, then the next scene we see is uh, with characters that are gonna be important in this arc. There, uh, there's like a convoy. Of like a bunch of religious people, uh, headed by uh, the, uh, the Iron Chain Knights people, the whole the, the holy knights that got that captured Guts once and then he escaped. Their their job is now to like, like uh, escort this like priest guy because mm -hmm. uh, they failed their previous mission. Uh, and then uh, like a bunch of like people that were tortured, the uh, attack this convoy, and then they all get killed and tortured into death. Yep. By Father Mogus, who like he steps out of his like armored um, convoy with his uh, torture gang, and they have like a really cool JoJo pose shot. Yeah, the mugs um, of the month us shot. Yeah, they're like kind of imposing. The tortures are all pretty scary mm -hmm. overall, and uh, he's also and he he is the Moyai head uh, <laughs> face. I fucking love <laughs> that guy. Every time I see his Moyai head looking face, I just vine boom my head for myself. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> But yeah, he's, he's like very religious, but he's also like kind of nuts religious. 
Yo, yo, he's like one of those. He, he is the most religious man. You know, the one that everybody knows. Yeah. He's very. He's like, uh, being religious means uh, that you have to endure being tortured to death. Which is very true. Uh, which is a scene that comes up once they arrive at the tower, which is gonna be like the important place. Uh, right. The people there are like star There's like a, a refugee camp outside of the tower, and they're all like starving and feeling bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the women there is like. Uh, we had to steal food because my child is dying. And Father Mogus is like, this is very great. Uh, you had to, you committed a sin, but you did it for like a good reason. So come with me to the tower. And then they go into the tower, and the child that she's like almost dying in her hands. Uh, they help her. They help the child out. They give the child food. Mm -hmm. uh, so like the child is safe now. But Father Mogus says, uh, you still sinned, so you gotta you gotta make up for that. And then they they bring her to the torture chamber which is a very 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 rough torture chamber the the things that are going on in there are very graphic uh a lot of naked men and women and they're all being tortured in very bad ways yep and uh the mother who protects her child uh, she gets tortured to death not not to death but like she gets tortured really really bad and i don't think we see where either she died but at least the least we know is that uh she gets tortured really badly to the point where her body is disfigured and father mogul is like you gotta you gotta do this you gotta, gotta do this this for this for john mm-hmm uh, then we see like the refugee camp. In the refugee camp, there's uh, uh, like a group of uh, prostitutes led by one particularly uh, good prostitute, and that is where Kaska is. She's part of the prostitute gang, but she doesn't prostitute herself. I think I'm pretty sure like it was uh, yeah, said that that's not the case. Mm -hmm. They they basically say because Kaska's brain is so broken that they they they, they look after her, but they don't force her to like be a prostitute. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, we see those prostitutes, and uh, that's where Casca is, and uh, I think... I mean, oh yeah, the Iron Chain Knights are with them the entire time, and uh, at this point, the leader of the Iron Chain Knights kind of looks up to Father Mogus. Like, she asks him, like, yeah, is, 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 is doing this, like, okay? And he basically tells her, uh, yeah, it is, in fact, the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, you do need to torture people for them to understand God, and she uh, she accepts that. Yeah. And we kind of get, like a, blick, like, a, like, a look into her mentality. And her backstory, and uh, she, it's basically like uh, said to us that she used to, as a child, uh, she lived like close to where witch burnings were happening. And one day, she like, like at a night time, she went out. She saw like the witch burning, mm -hmm. and uh, she participated in the witch burning really hard. And she learned from that that burning witches is good because then people dance and are happy. Like the people think it's good right. like, when, when you. When you burn a witch, when you like throw the fire onto the the pile, everyone is like, "Ooh, this is great!" And like, uh, the sh like the shadows of people dancing appear yeah, every time awesome. you throw like, it. Yeah, and she like learned from that that that's like a good thing. It is. Uh, and uh, she kind of is like horny. She's like horny for fire now. She like every time burning happens, she like looks at the fire the entire time, and all the all her knights are like, she's kind of weird about it. <laughs> and then later we see a shot where like she looks into like a fire in her room and she masturbates about it, and she's. She's really into it. Like, uh, her fetish is burning witches, and Very also base. dominatrix stuff. Very so, base. like, that's her character. Yeah. Uh, I think the next part is uh, we learn a bit more about one of the prostitutes. She has like a lover, and yeah. uh, one night they go out together, and she's like, "Would you uh, follow me to hell?" And he's like, "Yeah, I would follow you to hell." And then she's like, "Come with me." And then he does. And then they, and then they go to like a secret location outside of the refugee camp, like uh, some, uh, like they go up a mountain and then there's like a cave, and they look go into the cave and what do we see? Our favorite thing from the prologue, a de big devil orgy. I fucking love that shit. And once again, a goat head Satan cock. <laughs> Dude, iconic. Best part of Bleed. Yeah. So, so she takes her clothes off. He takes his clothes off, and he's like, and she's like, come with me, the, become part of us, and then. Two seconds after, like, after that, like two guys like just take his girlfriend and like rail her, and he's like, "I guess I have to be fine with this." Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, I think like some women. No, no, I think she like at this point. They, um, first thing that happens is she like makes out with a bunch of other girls, and then she uh, tells them, uh, "Join us." And he's like, "Okay, sure." And then they have like sex during the uh, devil orgy. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, like, after they had some sex, uh, they go to, like, the more ritual part of it, where, um, they go up to, like, the, the leader of the, the Satanists, who's wearing a goat head. 
and she's like, oh yeah, they're right. just wearing it. Yeah, first you kiss him on the on the like heart, so he kisses his chest. Mm -hmm. Then you kiss his penis. So his big snake <laughs> and, cock. Yeah, and he he kisses his snake cock, and then uh, he has to drink uh, some broth. And uh, he drinks a broth, but then uh, he notices this broth kind of weird. The broth weird. is a and little then, sussy. And then he notices that the broth is made by like cooking humans. And then yeah. he drops a broth and runs away. And she's like, "Oh no, he's like bad. Go kill, kill him, kill him now." Mm -hmm. uh, and he like runs away. Uh, I, think, I, th I think she runs after him even. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and then she like, like they they meet up outside, and. Uh, I, th I think he's like appealing to her. He's like, Dude, "This is like fucked up. We can't do this." And she's like, "Screw you!" And she pushes him off a cliff. Yeah. And then she like cries out for it. She's like, "You told me you would go to hell with me, and you didn't. You're a liar." Which was true. He should have just drank uh, his shit. I think this is one of the, like, in I think it's like a good point to bring it up because this is definitely like where it happens once. Uh, there's this like entity, like an eyeball entity. We keep seeing like mm -hmm. from their POV. And uh, did Eyeball Entity like did something here to like make sure that guy survives? Like he falls off a cliff, but he like survives miraculously. I think he falls into the water or something. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, like the, the entire time while you read the chapter, you keep seeing this like POV, and it is messing around with things, and it clearly is like a hostile to our protagonists. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, like uh, the next cutaway is like I like, think they're back at the camp. I don't remember for sure. I, like, I think at this point, like, stuff happens where, like, the girl, uh, is like, damn, this Casca girl, I don't like her too much. So like, the, the, the girl just, they just pushed this guy off. She's like, I don't really like Casca too much. We should probably just get rid of her. No, wait, that comes later. Mm. But I, I don't even remember, like, the exact remember. order. Uh, I think, I mean, like, basically, like, they fall. Like at some point, the, um, they followed that girl back to like the devil orgy thing. Uh, I think she brought Casca with her to the devil orgy this time. Like it's like another day, and she brings Casca yeah. with her mm -hmm. for some reasons. But the, like the prostitute was like really like like leading the prostitutes. Like she follows them, and uh, eventually she, she like sees them there, uh, and she like slaps the shit out of the the devil cultist prostitute. And, like even like she like takes her over like a child over her knee and like slaps her on the butt. Mm -hmm. Which is very awesome. Uh, Love that scene. She did, she did, she disciplines her basically. Then she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then she calls her a stupid girl for joining the Devil Orgy Club. Which is unbased. Uh, but, we love the yeah. Devil Orgy Club. Oh no, wait, she didn't take Casca with her. Now I remember. Uh, she just followed her to like the Devil Orgy thing and Casca followed like her to like leading. Oh, Kasuka that's right, yeah. Yeah, so that's what happened. Um, but yeah, uh, basically, uh, the the devil orgy people try to like uh, sexually assault Casca because oh, you know, can't have a can't have Casca go without being sexually assaulted for too long, right? Of course. Uh, but the, then, I like I think Cask the, the demon child does like all the things. Like, I don't think it's actually Casca protecting herself with like demon magic. I think it's Casca's child using like. Yeah, this birds of the dead to protect Casca, and then everyone thinks that she's a witch. And the mm -hmm. Satan, obviously, the Satan called people think that Casca is awesome because she's a witch. So, going forward, uh, the prostitutes, there's like a bunch of people in the camp just keep like giving them the prostitutes gifts. We specifically like give these gifts to Casca, please, because she's the witch leading us. Uh -huh. And there's, yeah, there's like one pretty cute panel of like Casca being like super dripped out by like all the gifts she was given. Yeah. But still being not really silly. Um, and um, it is, like, they basically say, uh, like, the, the leading prostitute knows that this is a problem because being, like, like this is going to arise suspicion from, like, the other people. And uh, basically, the way this camp works is that uh, if you go to up to the priest and say, hey, this guy, he's like a heretic. The, the priest is like, okay, we're going to capture this person and bring him to the torture chamber. Yep. So uh, it's very, like, you don't want to be accused of anything because if you are accused... Being accused is enough to be like tortured to death. Mm -hmm. And it's at some point, basically, you can do. and uh, I, I, I think at some point, like some knights are carrying like a girl who was accused of something away, 
and mm-hmm. uh, the knights are like, "Fuck you! Stop resisting! I hate you so much! Nobody's gonna help you out!" And then the leading prostitute like goes in to help her, um, and, and then the knight is like, uh, "You, you, you, uh, you poor people! I hate you so much! <laughs> I'm gonna kill all of you now!" And he like attacks her, and uh, like she's holding like the 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 one girl with her in her arms, yeah, trying to protect her, and we see like the knight's sword going like closer to them. We're like, oh no, what's gonna happen? And then God shows up, and he's basically like, "Fuck you!" Uh, he destroys the knight, uh, and like a bunch of other knights show up, and he's like, "That's that's nuts berserk, mm-hmm. capture him!" And mm-hmm. the, that's that kills all the knights basically present. Yeah, because he's guts berserk. He went yeah. berserk. Yeah, he's, he asks around for Casca during this entire time, and then the, the leading prophet notices that, and it's like, "Oh, you know Casca?" I mean, they did call Casca a different name, but he. They they noticed pretty clearly that like Elaine, um, yeah, they they noticed that they were that he was talking with Casca, and because he saved them, they assumed that he was a good person, so they were like, okay, we can uh, bring you to Casca, mm-hmm. but unfortunately for gods, uh, the devil lady, <laughs> uh, the, the devil prostitute girl took Casca with her to the devil orgy. Dumb bitch. Yeah, so uh, they're looking for Casca, uh, the stupid child who we haven't mentioned yet. There was this like stupid child. <laughs> and it got saved I from a bunch kid. of Indian people. Yeah, got saved the child from a bunch of Indian people because in the lore <laughs> currently Midland, you know, a sh- shoujo fan land, yeah, uh, it's currently being invaded by like India. Like uh, all the people are based on like Indian stuff. Uh, I, l- I looked up their weapons and stuff. Uh, they're oh, all really? like Indian weapons. Interesting. Yeah, all the like sp- funny weapons they use, they're all like traditional Indian weapons. So mm-hmm. they th- they also have like war elephants and stuff like that. So yeah, like the idea is that uh, the country that is invading Midland, which is is India, place Europe, is India. Interesting. Um, yeah, and uh, in these like border regions where they're currently at, there's like roaming Indian soldiers running around. Just and they're really skilled compared to like the average mid soldier. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they get like they they kill like the mid soldiers. Right. And yeah. uh, Gatsby Berserk is obviously overpowered, so he kills like twenty five of the Indian soldiers, saving this child. And the child is like. Damn, this guts guy is awesome. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna follow him. And uh, ever since then, the child is with guts. And it's awesome. I hate that child. It's really annoying. He's like, uh, as I said before, uh, it's like something that came up. He is also comic like, relief, just yeah. like Puck. Mm-hmm. But he's like, like I'm like, like Puck has like some good moments. He has no good moments. He's also like one of those pervert characters who like he keeps thinking about, for example, if he like does well, the prostitutes are gonna have sex with him. Yeah, uh, stuff yeah. like that. It's like definitely the worst character in Berserk so far, uh, arguably. I mean, there's like there's like sexual assault characters, but they generally they prefer like a few chapters at most. And mm-hmm. this kid is like always like has been like there for like a few volumes now. Right. And, like he has had no moment where I like didn't feel significantly worse with him being on screen. So arguably the worst character. Even you know you're bad when you're worse than a uh, sexual assault horse. <laughs> Hey, sexual assault horse, cool guy. I mean, I'll give sexual assault horse hold that. Um, didn't overstay his welcome. Exactly. He was there for like what? One panel. Like two. Yeah, exactly. Like the panel. It was like okay. It was like three panels. It was like the original panel, then the panel where he takes his cock out, and then the panel where guts like slides his head off. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we got three panels of rapist horse. So it's not. It's, it's not as bad as having this like really annoying child who also constantly talks about like having sex, be there the entire time. Right. Uh, so yeah, he like he like stalks them. Like he like he, he finds out where Casca's going and he like goes after him. Eventually, Guts also finds out, but he's like a little bit delayed. So like uh, he arrives at the scene like a bit too late. Um, at a devil orgy place, they basically are like Casca's our goddess, but Casca's gonna have sex with Goatman. <laughs> <laughs> And then the child, like after finding out that Casca's gonna have sex with Goatman, uh, tries to rescue Casca by like throwing rocks at people. And then, mm-hmm. uh, like the the orgy's interrupted. Uh, this moment's kind of funny because all the like devil cultists are naked, and he like keeps throwing rocks at their yeah, dicks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like the only moment this kid had where we love this kid. It was kind of cool. <laughs> Based kid. But yeah, he interrupts like the devil orgy that way a bit. Um, but eventually, because like uh, the devil orgy becomes like a demon orgy because of Casca stuff. Like Casca does 
things. Casca is like attacked. Casca is assaulted by the gold guy, mm -hmm. and because of that, uh, I think the cre the dead creature like we're following, right? I, I think it's kind of implied that he transformed like like he transformed the cultist into like demons and also the the main gold guy into like a full demon. Kind of, I think so. I think it's. I think they said like the goat guy was like a half apostle. The apostles being th people like Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, I think that per that POV egg that is like against our people uh, did that. It's like implied. Um, and then the uh, the knights at this point have like followed the demon then uh, because the guy who survived brought them to this place, saying that this is where the, all the heretics are. Mm -hmm. So. They storm like the devil orgy, and then it turns out all the devil orgy people have turned into demons, and like a fight ensues. Uh, I think in the background, the the goat that has transformed into like a half demon is like trying to get in, into Casca's the JJ. Yeah. And then God shows up and like the hel helps her. That's like a really cool shot of like God standing in front of Casca, like protecting her with his like cloak. Casca sitting on the floor. Uh, which is obviously made better because of a uh, thin, ugly white line. I fucking love thin, ugly white line. So he protects her. Uh, I think mean, this fight is like, like yeah, he fight he fights the the goat guy and kills mm -hmm. the goat guy. Uh, he fights the, the regular guys, kills the guys. Uh, they all try to escape, but eventually, Casca and Co are captured by the knights and uh, gets like a standoff with Sergio. And Sergio's uh, this time even like. More effective, he corners Guts in like a really bad situation. Yeah, uh, that was cool. And Guts, Guts kind of like raw overpowers him a bit, but like he still escapes like completely unscathed. And Guts is like, this guy is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, like what, he, like the moves he pulled off, like he had me like in a really bad situation. But it was like even slightly worse. I might have even uh, been then killed. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says like the reason why he's like going after Guts is because he he can, he is actually like into the commander like. Um, even though the commander girl sucks and is like a weird pervert, uh, he, he definitely like protects her, like the Sergio guy. And uh, he's like, the commander is really not feeling so good because of gods, so I have to kill gods. Yeah. That's like his motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, then they cut back to like a tower. Uh, Casca's there. Gods and co are trying to, uh, are like, they are sneaking into the tower at this point. Uh, at some point, there's like a scene where. The father guy keeps smashing his face on the floor. And it's like awesome. how he prays. I love I that. I think it was a pretty good one. That was funny. Like, and he said, I, I think they said every day, a thousand times he just like falls flat on his <laughs> yeah. knees and face on yeah. the stone ground. And he, like, like he said, uh, his knees are like bleeding really badly. And he says, I just straight up cannot feel my legs from doing this. Like my knees mm -hmm. are like, completely numb. And the second, and I know already when the numbness goes away, it's going to be like a really, really terrible uh, pain. Um, yeah, which, which to be fair, this is, like supposed to imply that, like, that's a good hey, thing though. Like, the, yeah, the the priest is not actually like a hypocrite. Like, the, 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 I think the scene was mostly for that. Like, normally you expect, oh yeah, he tortures people, but like he himself would never want to be hurt. No, right. he, he hurts himself a lot as well. Like a lot, a lot. Uh -huh. Uh, they also like they, at this point they like spend time basically um, humanizing the torturers and the father guy. Mm -hmm. uh, they also talk about. All the torturers, they were like shunned from society because they looked ugly. <laughs> yeah. and the father saved them. So now they're torturers, but uh, they were shunned for humanity. Basically, um, they, because they look ugly, they were not allowed in society. They were like, the rocks were thrown at them. They had to like hide in the woods by themselves, and the father like rescued them uh, as mm -hmm. like children. Uh, so yeah, we hear that from Plague Doctor guy, and uh, right. well, it's obviously the coolest looking one. And he says, yeah, yeah I, we don't actually enjoy the torturing thing, by the way. Like, that, that's what he <laughs> says. Like, we do it because the father told us it's like a holy thing to do, and we need to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just glad that someone accepted us into society. And uh, yeah, that's why we're, we're so thankful for him. Uh, there's like a scene where like two of the like really ugly looking, you know, like they're like he himself only like has like a problem with like sunlight. Like if he's exposed yeah, to sunlight, yeah. his like skin burns and he like. Uh, swells up, so he's always in his plague doctor suit, so no sunlight reaches him. Mm -hmm. The other guys are like deformed, you know, they look like uh, you know, the one guy from the Disney movie in France, the no, the Nostradam guy. Mm -mm. Uh, well, 
most people probably know. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, very ugly guy in France, Disney movie. Uh, he lives like in a clock tower. Yeah, they, they kind of oh, look like Oh, that one. Yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, there's like a cute scene where like a bunch of crows came in from the window and they're like they're really good with animals seemingly like mm -hmm. the, crow, the crows are having a good time they're like dancing and they're having a good time um, and they're like oh damn like, these guys look really hardcore but they're actually like uh, nice I, I, in general like uh, people being good with animals is like a, a general like thing in media implied that they're like kindred good spirits Usually, like yeah. they're good people mm -hmm. they're calm people actually so like it's supposed to be like a shocker because they're like these very grotesque looking torture dudes and they do torture people right but yeah like uh, this whole scene is basically to tell us hey the father and the torturers they're not actually like black people they're morally gray people whoa uh, they, are, they're supposed to be morally gray i think whoa <laughs> what, what, what are you voting me for no no don't worry about it what do you say no don't no don't worry about it <laughs> All right. I hope I didn't like say anything offensive by accident. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, at the tower, the father finds the way finds Casca at some point. Um, mm -hmm. There's like a scene where they're like in the torture cell. The one girl, the Satan girl, and Casca. And the torturers come in. And they're like, one of you will now be tortured. Choose which one. And she's like, Casca. Uh, Take Casca. <laughs> yeah. But, Oh no! Actually, sucks. yeah, it wasn't like quite like that. She was like, "Should I protect Casca?" I don't think I. She, she's like thinking about protecting she's Casca. She's thinking about it. Yeah, because the torture, because they didn't say anything, the torture just picked Casca, and then they're, they're like leaving, and she's like, "Oh, I, I really should protect Casca," but she's like, she doesn't have the guts to tell him. The the what? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a funny joke. Uh, I think that scene was actually pretty funny because the torture, at this point, like you know, it's implied the tortures are like actually pretty humane people you know they, they yeah, like, yeah. Uh, so like the, uh, the torture guy's like actually we're gonna take you because you didn't protect your friend fuck mm -hmm. you you're a terrible person <laughs> so based <laughs> the devil was pretty awesome I liked it well not <laughs> uh, and then they bring her to the torture chamber like on their way to the torture chamber though, she's like I have to uh, this, this really sucks but I really have to protect Casca now. I'm gonna show some guts I'm gonna be oh courageous show some uh, what? Yeah, just, yeah, she goes, they go into the torture room while she, like, has those thoughts. And the second she sees what's in the torture room, she's like, no, I can't do this. And, uh, <laughs> and it, the next scene is, like, them walking back. And the torture guy's like, bro, you really suck. Like, you just you, you spilled the beans before we could even, like, rip one finger off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very pathetic behavior. Yeah, the, to the torturers at this point are like, you're just a bad person. <laughs> I mean, she is. We were we were about to torture you, and we are the good guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they go back to the cell, take Casca. Um, I I think they bring Casca to Father Mogus. Uh, Mogus, Father Mogus. Father Among Us, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Father Among Us, basically, you know, he heard he hears that Casca is the witch, and he's like. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get her. We gotta kill her immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, and they pull up one of those Iron Maidens, which don't it never actually existed in history. But I, I guess if there's one place hey, where Iron Maidens, are like, yeah. Honestly, if there's one place where Iron Maidens are like, like them, them being there is not like a lore fail. Is Berserk because I could see the Berserk world actually coming up with the Iron Maiden. <laughs> yeah, probably. It makes sense. Yeah, so they put Casca on the Iron Maiden, and Casca's about to die. Mm -hmm. But then Ka Demon Child saves Casca once again. Uh, and uh, at this point, the cat, like, this, this, the, everyone, like, all the torturers and all the knights see the, like, spirits of the dead that, like, always attack yep. Casca and Guts. Mm -hmm. And they're like, holy shit, monsters. I didn't think monsters were real. <laughs> <laughs> and they all, like, run away into, like, a chapel. They go, they, they, but the, the place where we saw the father praying earlier, I think, they all run away there, basically. Yeah. And uh, Demon Child protects Casca, I think, at this point. Like, uh, yeah, I think like so. wraps Casca yeah. in like, a protective layer. Um, mm -hmm. And then, then it cuts, like, Guts and Co, and they're, like, sneaking in. Then it cuts back to, like, the father and stuff. They're, like, in a chapel. They're, like, holding the door. And then uh, we see the, like, POV thing again. 
and that P like POV eye, uh, it does something to the father. We, we see, we, and then th that's the only thing we see. Like uh, something is how like something happens to the torturers and the father, and then it cuts back. We don't actually see what exactly happens to them, but something happens to them. Mm -hmm. um, they see guts again. Uh, I think at this point he is basically at Casca. Like uh, like he slices his way through the dungeon to like the the demon people. Yeah. Uh, and he finds Casca, I think. And then uh, Father Mogus shows up, and Father Mogus and Emra has transformed into angels. Yep. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Father Mogus has Casca in his hands, and Gus has to fight all the guys now, mm -hmm. all the torturers who have transformed into angels. They have, like, angel wings, and uh, some of them have, like, angel faces as well. And they're really strong. Like, it's implied that these guys are crazy strong. They um, are, yeah. And Gus is also struggling sometimes. Like, like, he, over, like, in the end, he still wins the fight, but he he was, like, in a pretty bad situation. He got, like, smacked around a bunch. He's definitely hurt from this fight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. But he, like, he kills, uh, basically, all of them besides two who are, like, with Father Mogus. And right. Father Mogus, like, goes down the tower uh, because he wants to burn Casca. Um, Skeleton Knight is also, like, he, there's, like, a side plot with Skeleton Knight, like, riding towards this tower. And he is trying to fight the, like, IPOV thing we saw the entire time. Yeah. Uh, at some point, the like main prostitute like falls off, once again because uh, the the stupid devil prostitute girl because she sucks, and uh, yeah, she like fuck her. Yeah, uh, there's like a scene where like she holds her and she's like, I don't think I can hold this out, but if I just drop her, to drop like the person who was like saving me the entire time, then mm -hmm. I then we can get out of the situation. And then she does. I mean, no, no, that's not. No, <laughs> Before she can even, like, drop her, like, consciously, she, like, lets go because she wants to, like, save her. Which is, like, there is, like, in general, like, a situation that keeps coming up with her. She has, like, bad thoughts, and before she can even, like, realize the bad thoughts, someone else already makes a choice for That's her. That's true, yeah. As, like, a courageous good person. Yeah, she kind of sucks. And then, the the like, we see the POV at some point. It's an egg with, like, faces and, like, <laughs> tentacles coming out. And then the egg talks about how it is one of um it found a behemoth and uh it transformed into like uh, this creature they, they they used to be like one of the random peasants and yeah. they they looked really ugly and they were uh shunned from society nice. and uh they, they they like made a hole for themselves and crawled in and lived there and then at some point people like, threw started throwing dead hole. bodies in there yeah and then he like suffocated and died from all the weight of all the corpses but then before before that, like the god hand came to him and saved him and transformed into this version mm -hmm. of him, this egg. Uh, and it gives like a, a philosophical lesson to like the the main prostitute, as into like there's people like a one devil prostitute who are just terrible people basically. Like mm -hmm. they, they they even though they cannot live without people like you, they keep uh, shunning and hating you for yeah, that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm and it says like, I'm kind of like her. Just He's like literally. Her. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and then there, there's like a multiple moments where like devil guy, devil knight skull guy, he, he keeps failing to like kill this guy. Like he's, he's yeah, really he bad. Sucks. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he, he escapes, uh, and devil knight guy has to like fight the darkness. Mm -hmm. And the tower collapses. Uh, like God's like after God's wins this fight, the tower collapses where they are in. Uh, then they're outside. The father tells everyone, hey, we're going to burn Casca because she sucks. Right. Uh, and Guts somehow survives the tower collapsing. Well, he's Guts. Yeah. And he has to fight the darkness. And the darkness, like, takes form similar to the god hand. And Guts is like, is this a god hand? And then he's like, no, it's not a god hand. It's just illusions. But it might be the god uh, hand. And Guts has to make, make a choice where he wants to fight the illusions of the god hand or he wants to save Casca. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes after Casca. Who's like currently being dragged to being burned? Like and a witch. Uh, yeah, so we're almost done at this point. And I think the last like this is basically like where Guts and Casca are left off. Yeah. And the last shot we see is the egg finds their child, who is like very power like after having protected Casca multiple times, he's like very powered out, laying on the ground. Yeah. He's like, oh, we kind of you kind of like me as well, child. <laughs> <laughs> And then he's like, we should become one. And he eats the child, and we see, like, the child is inside the egg now. Yep. So, uh, and personally, my theory, 
that there's one character we know is going to appear at some point. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think, we could be, uh, my theory is that maybe that Guts' child, like, fuses with this guy eventually, mm -hmm. and they become Schnauz. <laughs> it's possible. And that is my current theory. I don't know if any Berserk fans are watching. Uh, I rate my theory uh, X out of 10. Man, yeah, now that we've, like, discussed... Like, all, like now, now that everyone is caught up on what happened in Berserk, now we can, like, discuss what we thought about Berserk so far. Um, Love Arc, I think we already said, not a big fan. Ass. Like, pretty ass. It was definitely, like, the weakest arc, and I was kind of, like, worried, you know. Obviously, Golden Age is, like, very good, and then, like, a very, very mid-arc coming right after. Mm -hmm. Definitely worried me. But th this current arc, I think uh, it's pretty good. Like, it's definitely not Golden Age level, but uh, it has me interested again. I think the characters... Are interesting. There's a lot of depth to most of the characters, I would say, that are like introduced. Um, even like uh, the characters, like the torturers, I thought they were just gonna be like, "Ooh, they look scary," and they're gonna be enemies at guts fights. But the, there's some depth to them. And when they transform into angels, it's like I think also symbolic to some degree. Uh, I think the one panel where guts kills a plague doctor guy and he like falls over in a position where he looks like he's praying. That's like a pretty nice panel. Yeah, I think so. I like that one. I also like I also like torture characters. <laughs> like uh, I don't know, I think their backstory is nice and uh, like the the few moments they have are very humanizing to them. Like uh, like when they judge the one girl for like ratting out Casca instead of taking the torture mm -hmm. or like instead of like wanting to torture Casca they want to torture her because she didn't stand up for Casca. They're like very human moments, right? Like like they're not comedy, like, they're not comedically evil. They literally see like someone being an asshole, and they're like, "Well, fuck you." Like right. we we might be torturers, but you know you're not even protecting your friend. I think those moments are really good. Like I like the torture guys. Yeah, even Father Mogus. Like at, at first I thought he's just like a com comedic religious guy, but, but he, he also had humanizing he moments. And uh, he has a funny Moyai face, and uh, he's kind of—I mean, he's an angel as well now, so like, he's kind of cool. True. When he became an angel, that was really cool. I mean, he's pretty funny, right? He's, he's like an angel with the fucking boy eye face. So now, <laughs> like, he, he's very funny. Yeah. He's like one of those characters, because of the way he looks, like he immediately becomes more likable. Mm -hmm. He just looks that funny. But yeah, this arc is pretty good. It's pretty interesting. Uh, I think the demon orgy place being visited twice was kind of too much. I think they could have done it the first time already. Like they could have just done both those things at the same time. Yeah, but I love Demon Orgies. Demon Orgies is funny. There's a lot there's a lot of sex panels. Uh there are a lot of panels of like gir girls being spit roasted, uh girls making so out with other girls. I think they didn't show much guys having sex with guys, even though they they, sh they showed girls like making out with our girls and stuff, so that's bias. That's fucked up. Yeah. And that's one character we didn't mention at all. There's just one well, of the night is Jerome and he helps Guts and Co. And He's like a womanizer. Uh, he's like one of those like nobles that tells that, that like sleeps with like commoner prostitutes, and he's like, "I'm gonna like help you out." But he actually does so. Like he actually likes her. Like mm -hmm. he, he like he does risk his own life and position multiple times for her. So it's like a. Uh, I mean, at the start, it's like she also thinks that like he's like just telling her like nice sounding things. Like he's right. he's just a just to have like sex with her. But uh, yeah, like she eventually says, uh, "I'm I really." Like mistook you, Jerome. You actually are a good guy. Mm -hmm. he is. Yeah, he's a good guy overall. I would say he also like doesn't like the commander who sucks, uh, and he has a like nice humanizing moment with Sapirico guy, who's a cool guy. Yeah. So yeah, overall thoughts. Uh, this part of Berserk, a conviction arc, start of conviction arc, very mid. This part pretty good. Yeah, I'd say overall Boruto better. <laughs> Tag on. We, we're, we, we're talking about. Berserk, not Boruto. You can talk about Boruto later. I think I'd say overall, um, Boruto probably clears. Tiger became big Boruto's biggest fan in between the podcast, in between podcast episodes. I mean, what can I say, man? Boruto is pretty good. Any highlights you can think about of this part of Berserk that uh, came to your mind? That we haven't like discussed properly, um, or you just want to like, give some more thoughts on them? I don't think... I think so. I mean, my my overall thoughts on the whole series so far is there's too much sexual assault in in like child boobs. <laughs> Makes there's me a lot of it, and I don't like it very no, much. I, but I, I do say, like I do like a lot of the 
demon devil hell stuff, which is it's just an aesthetic that I think is cool. It is, it um, is. Um, regarding sexual assault, I think we haven't seen any sexual assault since The Horse, which has been two volumes, I think. So maybe, maybe a sign of something good coming Wow, up. two whole volumes. <laughs> Very impressive, I mean, Berserk. I mean, hey, this art, I mean, basically, like, ever since they got to the tower, we haven't really seen sexual assault happen. It's been mostly just cool demon stuff and cool plot stuff, so this is why I like this part, kind of. Yep, like, um, that's fair. I mean, the trial is still annoying, but, um, he had, he had this, like, throw rocket dick moment. That was pretty funny. That was funny, yeah. But that was about it, though, for him. Yeah. Overall, this arc, the Conviction Arc Part 2, pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. It's definitely a lot better than Conviction Arc Part 1. I wonder where there's going to be a Conviction Arc Part 3. I don't know. I think... I thought each major arc was about 100 chapters, so... And if Conviction Arc is 100 chapters... Like, where, where, where did, like, like around, the, like, 104, so 204 would be where Conviction Arc ends roughly. Like, around yeah. 200, probably. Yeah, it would be about 200, I think, so. If if that's correct, which I, th I think that's what I saw when I looked it up. And, uh, I think we're, like, at 140, 150, 150 now, so. Yeah. I'll, if Conviction Arc get, if it has, like, 60 more chapters to go, 50, 60, then I can see, like, there being a Conviction Arc part 3. Like, maybe a shorter Conviction Arc part for, like, 20, 25 chapters. Oh my god! Dude! What? Ayakashi Triangle is gonna end. Good. Tekken, we're still on Berserk. We should group read Ayakashi Triangle next. No. It's only 16 volumes. Tekken, focus on Berserk. I've said all so, I had no. to say about Berserk. I think I said most things as well. Um, we haven't ha we haven't talked about uh, things that couldn't happen today, in Berserk. So, what do you think could not happen today if Berserk came out today? Uh, in, like probably demon volume. sex, orgy, underage boobs, that kind of stuff. I mean, underage boobs, arguably, in uh, maybe not like a official manga release, but the uh, other Japanese ways of releasing things uh, definitely could I, I could see it there. Yeah, but, but not uh, in like a it, mainstream magazine. Yeah, demon. Yeah, Demon Sex Orgy probably not happening. Um, yeah, those, those sort of things. Uh, I mean, Berserk volumes are like now just very regular 20, like 20 ish pages, 11 volumes yeah. per chapter. Yeah. Yeah, Berserk volumes are like on the finger end, I think. They are, because they're like 250 pages usually. Yeah. Uh, pretty good. Uh, pretty mid! How do you think Berserk. Uh, uh, artist currently. Like, currently? Yeah. Like, where we're at? Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, it's alright. Um, yeah, and not to be against our savior, Ugly White Line. There were some pretty nice spreads who I think without Ugly White Line would have just been really good. Yeah, but I think the Ugly White Line kind of elevates them to the next level. Arguably. So I hope yeah. Ugly White Line stays with us throughout the whole, yeah. um, experience this this part of berserk has a lot of like guts berserk faces like we haven't really talked about that yet awfully there's a lot of guts berserk I faces he goes that. he goes nuts a lot in fact they said at one point say guts is going nuts yeah i remember that that was so funny <laughs> <laughs> he's literally the nuts berserk and he go he, he does go like nuts i, mean, I, I would say he, in this arc he's more he's tamer like in the previous arc he was like just super devilish in like the moth arc yeah. And now he now he was mostly calm. Like he's like a, he's like a calm angry now. Like mm -hmm. uh you don't really see like this like berserk nuts faces. There was much one right now. in like the last volume, I think. I'm trying uh, to remember when I mean, it I, happened specifically, but I can't remember. Mm. Uh, like the like really bad ones where like his eyes are like not vis like his pupils are not visible. We don't, yeah. I don't think we had one since Moth Art. There was, there the, was, there definitely was. I know he's like some angry faces doing the fights, but he he's definitely a lot more calmer, and I think it's like thematically because this is his conviction moment. He's he's not be oh. there for revenge. He's not there for angry. He, he's there for Casca. You might be a genius. So it's possible that if this arc doesn't turn out so well, if Casca maybe uh, something bad happens to her in this arc, that Guts might completely lose it, and he might yeah, actually. It was become uh, chapter one sixty four. He had a berserk moment. Page thirteen. Let me see. 
Wait, are we at 64 already? We're at 165. Oh, yeah. That's where we ended off. Mm -hmm. I, like, I started in the 150s, so I still have the 150s in my bearing. So, uh, 160. Let me have a look at this page. 164, page 13. Oh, yeah, a new Berserk chapter came out today that they were recording, by the way. So, uh, I hope all the Berserk fans are enjoying this new chapter. Have fun, Berserk fans. Yeah, fuck you, Berserk fans. Yeah, Berserk has made Boruto better. How come Berserk fans only talk about uh, mid arc? Yeah. Uh, they Tell only me talk why. about the good arc? They never talk about the mid arc. I mean, that's probably why. Because it's yeah. the good arc. I mean, people talk about like some things that happen in this arc. I know, for example, that uh, at one point. I, no, no, I not spoil. I know about some. Don't like, spoil. One aesthetic of God. I know one of God's aesthetic that is coming up. Like, one of, the, one of his upgrades. I know about that. Yo, spoilers, I dude. I think he said I know about something, and I'm not I gonna know. say what it is. What are we, what are we talking well, now about? you've ruined Berserk. We might as well stop the group read here and read Seven Deadly Sins instead. I mean, Berserk may have sexual assault, but so, Seven Deadly Sins has as well. But I don't think Seven Deadly Sins. Not might to the good. extent that Berserk does. I, hey, you like the horse, so maybe maybe it's a good thing. I, I don't like the horse. fucking horse. You, you said that this you said on this podcast multiple times you like the horse. And it was a bit, Bando. It was a fucking bit. I think it was a bit, guys. I think it was a bit. Chat, was this a bit? Chat said no. I don't think chat said anything. Well, yeah, anyone, thanks for watching. Anyone, hey, before before I end this, if you guys think that uh, Tegan likes the horse, uh, please write it in the comment section. Sir. Let me know if Tegan hates the horse. Anyway, thanks for watching this week's episode of Nuts Broken Time Podcast. Um, tune in next time. We're switching over to Seven Deadly Sins Podcast. See ya. <laughs> How about that?